Hey there folks, Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here again with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. As always, Abolitionist Abstractions is covered by the BIPCOT NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So today I want to discuss the uh, uproar over Cecil the Lion. Uh, Recently it has been announced that a dentist from Minnesota uh, was trophy hunting out in Zimbabwe and uh, apparently was uh, led astray by the people he paid money to um, in order to help him hunt a lion and they these people that have been deemed poachers uh, apparently went to a national park in Zimbabwe where Cecil the lion is known to live and lured him out of the park area by tying a dead animal to I believe it was the hood or maybe the rear of their vehicle but the story the story that I heard is at the very least they, they tied a dead animal to their vehicle and lured him out of the park so that uh, the kill could take place off of park property. Now, I'm somebody who, obviously due to my job, has an affinity for animals. Um, You know, I've I've often joked that I prefer animals to people because, well, animals don't talk back and uh, they don't have the uh, the feels issue that humans do. But so many people seem very, very upset about this, and I think they are a little misguided, at least many of them, uh, because there is this uproar that this this gentleman, this dentist, should be punished for his actions, um, and that it's so horrible that he killed this majestic creature. Meanwhile, soldiers go all over the world and kill humans on a regular basis and most people don't bat an eye to this um, because they're easily demonized and said oh those they were bad people so they deserve to die Um, but I've seen you know a couple of the stories I've seen on, on this one people even went so far to go to this guy's um website for his dental practice and were telling people that they shouldn't be using him uh, because he's a murderer and all this stuff and while I'm not particularly a fan of trophy hunting um, I don't really see the point Um, I don't think it necessarily should be banned uh, especially by the force of government and that's what's going on here because the dentist himself, and I'm not purposely purposefully leaving out his name, I honestly don't remember it because I really didn't pay too much attention to the story. Um, it was just hard to avoid because it's been splashed all over the social media sites um, and other alternative news sources that I seek out. So, they, this gentleman and the individuals that helped him have been labeled poachers because they took this poor lion from a national park in Zimbabwe and now they want to punish him uh, because he didn't he nor the individuals that helped him had the proper permits so it was what is deemed an illegal kill The problem here is that, as with most cases, property rights would solve a lot of these problems. Um, Unfortunately, any property claimed as government or national or or public property is not really legitimately held property because the abstract notion of the government, the abstract notion of society, can't own things. Individuals can own things. 
people who are capable of self-ownership can justly acquire property um, and it can be a group of individuals they can call themselves a company but it's still the individuals that are holding onto the property so by saying that what he did was illegal and that he was poaching from government property is well a tad ridiculous um, because as as you can now see since the proper permits weren't handed out ahead of time in this situation it's not much different than what goes on here you need permission from the government to do certain things and if you don't have the proper paperwork well then what you're doing is considered wrong even if you're not aggressing against anyone now yes the poor lion was actually aggressed against but this gets this is also tied to property rights um, because well here in New York for instance uh, domesticated animals are considered pieces of property now before I started down the path to anarchism and volunteerism um, when I had first started my business that's when I actually learned that the pets were considered property here in the state of New York and I was very upset by this because I was somebody I, I've had animals my whole life I love my animals I was one of those folks that considered them part of my family so I thought this was horrid that they were considered pieces of property and could be treated as such but as I started down this path and started learning about philosophy um, and the ideas of property rights in general it started to make sense to me and I started to see why in this instance the state was actually correct because well they could be considered subjectively as members of a particular family but they still have to have a place and property fits that place because well you can then own your animals and you can't own people because uh, well that's slavery um, but it's be, by trying to own another person you are violating their their property rights you're writing you're violating their right to self-ownership and while it would be nice for animals to have these same rights um, aside from possibly the great apes um, animals cannot are not capable of respecting the property rights of others they they are not moral actors they cannot reason they may claim an area of land based on dominance you know if, if they have depending on the animal if they have a particular hunting ground or something like that they may stake out their claim so that other animals stay away but it's not exactly a property rights thing because they do not have the capability of of reasoning they do not have the capability of respecting the rights of others and from my perspective um, as well as many other people that uh, thinks uh, along the same lines as I do you can uh, a human can own property because they own themselves but just like with most other things those rights only go so far as number one you're willing to defend them which in the case of animals uh, a lot of them will defend their perceived territory so that checks out but the second part of that is you also have to be willing to afford the same courtesy to others you have to be willing to respect the property rights of other individuals and animals um, you know like I said you talk about great apes maybe and then their intelligence levels they they, sh they show empathy and stuff like that so it's possible um, not proven yet um, but a lion for instance even one as friendly as Cecil, Cecil was supposed to be um, they don't really have the capability of respecting others property rights 
and you know most people would if an animal came and destroyed your stuff you'd be mad but most people wouldn't say oh well you owe me restitution now because animal can't comprehend that how are they going to give you restitution for your damaged property so it doesn't really work out so it makes more sense to consider them property um, and then you the individual who lays uh, claim to the particular animal would then be responsible for their actions um, you know like I said here in New York uh, it, it's one of the few things I think they've gotten right because um, now it makes sense to me because if you know for instance your dog if your dog goes ahead and bites somebody well you're not gonna get money or restitution out of the dog no you're gonna get it out of the dog owner um, you know and when you're talking about wild animals well yeah it's might be more difficult to quote-unquote own them um, but if this was a free society where we had either unclaimed land or privately held land and there was none of this ridiculous notion of public property government property um, these things that as I mentioned earlier are not really legitimate because it's just a an action of force um, the government in question has laid claim to a particular area of property and they are going to use the might right, might makes right mentality to enforce that um, which is well kind of uh, antiquated thinking shall we say um, because just because you can do so um, doesn't make you morally right which again when it comes to the animals the whole moral issue well they're not moral actors so but if you had a this free society with privately owned property, then the animals that wandered into your privately owned property or created a habitat in your privately owned property would fall under your jurisdiction. And then you, as the rightful owner, could do with them as you wish. Um, if you're somebody who loves animals and thinks it's horrible that anybody would dare hunt them, well then, you can protect them on your property. Um, if you're someone who wants to hunt animals for food, well then, you can do so on your property. Or you can find others who have property where these animals may be and work out a deal with them. Um, you know, if, if there's people that are trophy hunting well again that would be up to the private property owner now you can take this to at the extreme which many people do and uh, i've actually had this conversation recently with a few individuals about well if, if animals are property then you can just do whatever you want with them then how are you going to stop somebody who's just indiscriminately slaughtering their animals and torturing them well there's a couple of solutions to that. Number one, if it was their property to begin with, then technically, yes, they can do with it as they choose. But let's think about this realistically. Um, even in a free society, if you had, say, your neighbor, and it became known that he or she was going out and purchasing or somehow acquiring say cats and they were taking them back to their property and hanging them from trees and beating them and torturing them and and got and what whatever else they could possibly horrible things they could possibly do to these these little creatures um, number one uh, word would most likely get around in a hurry uh, number two the people who were supplying the cats to this neighbor uh, would also be become known and there's a very good chance that many people would find this horribly offensive and want it to end so they could either try to convince the person supplying 
the cats to this individual to stop supplying them. Um, or hopefully the person themselves who was supplying them would, le would learn that, oh, this was the real intention and well, I just don't want to, I don't want to get, I don't want to help you get cats anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to help you. Um, the, the individual who likes to torture cats like this could find themselves ostracized from the rest of the community and not be able to purchase basic essentials. Um, you know, if, uh, if the guy who runs the local supermarket has an issue with this, he may say, well, I'm not going to sell food to you anymore um, until you stop this practice because it's horrible. It, 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 greatly, it greatly saddens me. It, 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 it makes me mad even. So I'm just, I'm not going to sell to you because that's just, it's wrong in my book. Um, same goes for the local mechanics. They may say, hey, I'm not going to help fix your vehicles anymore because this is wrong. Ostracization is a hugely, hugely important tool. Um, you know, even in today's society, you know, that's what boycotts are all about. It's ostracizing the individual you are boycotting, trying to convince others to stop using their product, to in hopes of them either having to close down shop or at or at best change their ways. Um, so you know, stuff like that could easily happen. And then if the supply chain for the cats is now cut off to this individual, if he still believes that uh, this is something he wants to do and he should be able to do, um, the only other way he's most likely going to get them is to have to steal them from other people. And once again, if we're in a situation where all animals are considered property, then if he is stealing someone else's property, well, then that person is well within their rights to defend said property. And they could threaten them um, with uh, physical injury. They could say, hey, put my cat down or, I, or I, will have to, I will have to shoot you. And if he continues to try to take the cat, well, then you shoot him, you know? I mean, there could be more uh, or rather less violent ways to handle it, but you kind of get the idea. If everything in the animal world that is on somebody's property is considered property and then is legitimately held by an individual, then they have a vested interest in protecting it. Um, you know, the same goes for even wild animals and people thinking that, oh, well, um, then these hunters would have a field day and, and animals would end up extinct in a hurry. Well, that doesn't seem very likely because there's plenty of people that love just looking at these animals, love knowing they're around. So I would hazard a guess that it's the majority that at least have a favorable, favorable view of most animals. Um, so they could create their own sanctuaries. You get a large track of land and, uh, you know, you have animals that are now your property or a group of yours property and they can be protected, um, you know. Conservation efforts happen now, and depending on the species, um, some of those, even with the conservation efforts, they actually have to encourage some hunting um, to keep the population numbers at a, at a reasonable amount. Because, you know, like for instance, again, here in New York, we get overrun with deer very easily if we, if the hunters aren't allowed to go out and, you know, shoot a certain amount through the year. Now, of course, here, as is most places in the States, um, you have to get your permits and you have to be, uh, you know, you have to pay your tithing to the government to have permission to do this. Um, but even if, even if you remove that aspect, um, the same thing would still be necessary because certain animals can, well, breed like rabbits. Um, another problem I have here personally in my town <laughs> on Long Island, uh, we're overrun with rabbits constantly. Um, although I don't go around hunting them because, well, that would draw the attention of my neighbors and uh, gunshots freak people out a little bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, for population control, perfectly reasonable. Um, and if, if it's, you know, someone's property, um, then they have a say in what happens to it. So all of these things can be worked out and it would be much simpler 
under a property rights system because property rights really do solve so many problems. Um, it's, it makes disputes a lot easier to settle. You know, it makes, it makes disputes a lot easier to see when you look at them who is actually in the right, who is actually in the wrong. When you have this abstract idea of government and then the abstract idea of government's property, well, it gets kind of messy because who is actually responsible? Who is actually to blame? Who has been injured? You know, not very cut and dry. So, again, my idea, and I am far from the first to uh, say these things, it's, it's been said many, many times before that property rights would solve the problem. You know, the problem with Cecil could have been avoided. Um, or it could not have been. He, he could have still been killed. But if it had been a legitimate property claim, then you'd have an issue. Um, or, you know, then you'd, then you'd be able to take it somewhere instead of having a smaller state, Zimbabwe in this case, uh, asking for this gentleman to be extradited. And I think I saw the number of $55,000, or it might have been 55000 he paid for um, the right <laughs> to go to, to he had forked over that money to these uh would-be poachers um to go to help him with this hunt um but they want to find him incredible amounts of money um even back here even more ridiculous i've seen um uh, a report of i think it was one of one of the either either one of the state reps or one of the uh federal reps from minnesota um, actually declaring that she wants to investigate to see if he had broken any U.S. laws in the process of all this. And it's like, really? He was in Zimbabwe. What U.S. laws could he have possibly broken by killing a lion over there? Uh, leave it to the state. Anything and everything to get involved. And, uh try to pin somebody for breaking some arbitrary edict. It's got to be one he broke. Um, even though, according to everything I've read, he actually is a licensed hunter here in the States, and he has all the proper paperwork. Um, but they'll just, you know, anything to try to bring this guy down. Um, one of the worst parts, actually, I think, I, th I think it was in the USA Today version of the story I read, um, not only were they discussing this incident, which, okay, fine, this is a recent event, a lot of people are upset about it, I understand why it's considered news, um, but in this story, they also mentioned um, a previous instance of something he may or may not have done when it came to hunting here in the States, um, which, while related, I suppose, has nothing to do with this story. So all that is, is that particular media's uh, way of trying to swing public opinion uh, in the favor of those who obviously are pushing that story. Um, even further down in that same story, then they started to talk about, um, I think, some claim of sexual harassment by a former employee of his from years ago, again. Whether he did it or not is completely irrelevant to this story, but that's what the media does. They love to, you know, gain viewers. They love to drum up drama, so they'll throw anything and everything in there to demonize this individual um, and take the focus off of what actually happened, what the actual situation is, and what the possible rem remedies could be. No, instead, we'll just slaughter this man's character um, and assume that he's just a horrible, horrible human being. And that he, you know, I've even seen people calling for his death over this, which I guess shouldn't be too surprising considering the bloodthirsty nature of a lot of Americans um, who all think of themselves as peaceful, but rah, 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 the, uh, the troops for... Uh, running all over the world and killing people when it has absolutely nothing to do with their freedom. Um, so the bloodthirsty nature, I guess, as I said, is, is not really a surprise, but 
that's what that's all about. It's it's anything to get people's ire up to take the focus off of this was one instance of a man uh, flying over to a foreign land, um, spending his own money um, in order to do something that he enjoys um, because he seems to be an avid hunter. Um, and, you know, if you've got the money and you want to do those things, great. But uh, you need to have a private property system set up first uh, because otherwise all the uh, nuts are going to come out of the woodwork and scream for your head because you murdered this beautiful creature. And like I said, I'm not a fan of trophy hunting, so I can see why people would be upset. But to wish death on a human for killing an animal um, and again and even worse it's you know the, the another part of the story is that people are upset because he didn't kill him outright and he had to track him for 40 hours i think before he finally was able to put him down completely and while yes that's to me even to me that's that's horrible i i feel bad that that poor lion had to suffer for that long um but he was hunting him with a bow and arrow, um, you know, which, yeah, he probably should have been a better shot <laughs> um, if he's not capable of, you know, taking an animal out right away uh, with that bow and arrow. He may want to practice a little bit more, um, but, you know, that also flies in the face of what a lot of people assumed when they first heard this story because um, this was another opportunity for some of the uh, gun control nuts to right away throw up their arms just like everybody else with all the other hunter stories and how it's so cruel that these people you know they they shoot these poor defenseless animals and 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 you wouldn't like it if they had a gun in return. Well, this guy didn't even have a gun. He was hunting with a bow and arrow, which is a hell of a lot harder. Does take a lot more skill and does uh, level the playing field, so to speak, um, a lot more. Um, but again, people only took off with part of the story. And uh, I mean, that was obviously, that had to be quickly scuttled as soon as it was discovered that he did use a bow and arrow. But it, it just shows the uh, ridiculous nature of a lot of people who just run completely on emotion and are easily sucked up by the news cycle and just want to scream their opinion and basically be hypocrites by talking about how hor horrible this one individual is while they completely ignore the atrocities going on in the rest of the world. Often, uh, created by and or directly caused by um, you know the US government and their agents who most of these same people would cheer on on a regular basis um, I saw a, a meme that started floating around shortly after this talking about how it's it's kind of interesting that people want to have this this guy strung up uh, for going across to another country and taking the life uh, of a living creature where and he's you know demonized immediately meanwhile you have somebody like well Chris Kyle who went to another country uh, killed reportedly 160 living creatures um, and, uh, but that's perfectly fine, all because, you know, they, they were the bad guys, uh, even though I have still yet to see any evidence that any of those people, or at least most of those people, had done anything other than defend their own land um, after their country was invaded by an occupying force, um, you know. Did, were, were some of the people he killed bad? Probably. Possibly. Doesn't matter. It's still human life. And unless you're being um, attacked directly, or somebody else is being di attacked directly, um, 
you know, just killing them on a, on an, on an order. I don't know. It doesn't seem too heroic to me. So, but that's a whole other story. I just thought that meme was funny because it points out the the ridiculousness of people. The the it's the bloodthirsty nature of people who want to act like they are peaceful and um, are, are caring because they are so upset about this death of a lion but they are completely oblivious uh, to the deaths of human life, um, you know, all well, because it's considered war. So, again, property rights would solve this whole thing. Um, you know, legitimate property, not government property. Um, you know, animals, again, if you want your animal to be part of your family, if you have pets, you know, that's fine. I, you know, I got my animals here. Um, they're considered part of our family. Um, but they still, I'm still responsible for them if something happens. So I have been able to change my tune about, you know, domesticated pets being property. Makes sense for, uh, you know, non-domesticated pets to be property too, because it can solve these issues in the future. Um, you know, you won't have, you know, if people want to go out and uh, killing for fun, you know, if there's legitimately held property where these animals are on, they may find themselves unable to do so if enough people decide, well, we don't want this done. We don't want this done on our property or to our property. So you can't do that here. Um, and then if, you know, big people that still want to do that can find a section of land that they can own legitimately and they want to you know, kill animals for fun, again, they, there's a good chance they'll find themselves ostracized from the community at large, um, and yes, it, it may be sad that they may be able to kill um, a, a number of animals that are on their land, but once that's done, they're out of animals, you know, instinctually, a lot of animals can sense danger, so if a lot of their friends are starting to get, you know, whacked, <laughs> uh, they may start to scamper too. And then what do you have left? A huge track of land that's got no animals on it and your, your fun's over. So these are all things to think about. Like I said at the beginning, it's, it's very sad that Cecil had to die. Um, but I think the uh, uproar <laughs> that has been caused over it is, as with most, most things in the status paradigm, not just overblown, but it's been uh, miscategorized and it, it should be a property rights issue and too many people are just way too emotional about this and they're not thinking clearly, which again is a uh, commonplace in the status paradigm, but you know, one can only hope that people will get a little more logical. That's what uh, we here at the Seeds of Liberty are all about, trying to uh, plant those seeds, and, and this is one of them. It may not seem like, like it to, uh, you know, at first glance, but, it, you know, like I said, if you examine this and you think of it in terms of property rights, I think it makes a lot more sense. Um, so instead of championing the uh, possible death of this individual, um, and encouraging others to uh, hunt him down and hurt him for what he has done. Uh, let's think about things realistically. Animals are great. They are, I think, necessary for our survival in so many ways, but they are not moral actors, no matter how much you want them to be. If they cannot be moral actors, if they are not capable of respecting the property rights of others no matter how much you love them they can't be on the same level as humans it's just you know it's just not right you can't do it it, 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 it can't work out like that um, no matter how much you love them you know it's it's something I tell uh, a lot of my clients all the time especially when it comes to uh, doing behavioral work uh, with their dogs and a lot of times I see issues where people have 
their dogs have quote unquote behavioral issues because they're treated like humans by their owners and it messes with the dog's head because while they most most dogs seem to love getting petted they love attention they love all this stuff they're still not humans they don't think and reason like we do so i tell people all the time you know when it comes to these situations and and i try to explain to them and i use my my dog as an example i love my dog all right, Cameron and I have been together for uh, almost eight years now. She is my riding buddy at work. Um, you know, she's with me almost every day. I take her to work with me. Um, so we're together, you know, most of the day. Uh, she used to sleep in bed with us all the time. Uh, she's she started to stop doing that now that she's a little older. Um, but, you know, she's my buddy. But no matter how much I love her, no matter how much I love having her around, I always have to remind myself that she's still a dog and she needs to be treated like that in some respects. You know, and it kind of blows a lot of people's mind when I say that, but it, you know, it's true. You, you can love your animals, but they're not humans. Um, now, yes, they may, some, so a lot of animals may be nicer than some humans, but on the whole, they just can't be on the same level um, for the reasons, again, that I've mentioned. You know, they're not moral actors, and they can't possibly protect, uh, respect property rights. So they have to be kept in a separate class. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think that would solve a lot of problems. And uh, maybe would get people to realize how silly they're being over freaking out and wishing death on a man for taking out a uh, another living creature uh, when that living creature cannot think and reason the way that so many other living creatures are slaughtered on a regular basis usually by the state uh, and those people are people cheer those situations on priorities folks priorities so I think that's all I got for today. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. You can find out more about this show and everything else we have to offer at the Seeds of Liberty at theseedsofliberty.com. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.